John chapter 11, we've got John's gospel, chapter 11, verse 17, and the following. Now this story in this passage runs all the way to verse 37, but I'm going to read up until verse 27. So follow along with me. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had been dead or in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give it to you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. May God bless the reading of the word and sanctify it in our spirit. Now, I want you to help me uh, with, my, with my subject and title for this sermon. And um, this, I have chosen to call this sermon, How to See beyond foregone conclusion. I'm going to say that again and I don't want you to repeat that to me. How to see beyond foregone conclusions. Say that with me. How to see beyond foregone conclusions. Amen. We are, we are living outcomes. We, we deal with conclusions every day. We make decisions about how we live, how we behave, what we eat, how we dress, what we drive, even to, to where we work. And usually what, what we feel on the inside is that we want certain things to happen to us in certain ways and at certain times, and if we can, and we can manage it, uh, we don't want anything out of our immediate control. We want to feel, at least, that we are in control of what's going on in our lives. But that is not how life works. Life often presents us with situations and circumstances that are out of our control. And that leaves us uncomfortable. That leaves us in despair. That leaves us discouraged. Because we feel that as the puppet master, if we're not pulling the strings on something, then something else is pulling the strings on us. Oh, 
his spirit. He's going to pour out his spirit. And the church, the church has got to be the, the grand central station for this, for this takeover. And, and I'm here to tell you, um, many of us in the church are going to, going to be, uh, going to be happy, but a whole lot of folk are going to be um, unhappy. Because, because we even, at certain times, want to control what the Spirit is doing in our lives. and of decision making, there are some things that, as I just said, remain out of control and we literally can't do anything about them. Death is out of our control. Sickness is out of our control. Just to name two things, that, that's, that's those two things, we, we know that we can't control either one of them. Because none of us know the, the last hour of our lives. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And, and it does not matter how rich or how poor you may live in the palace or a shack. Everybody dies. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody dies. And, and, and men have been trying uh, for years to control death. Late night TV sometimes, and they have got all kinds of pills and medicines and poisons that they want you to take to remain young and feel, feel alive. But I decided at 63 years old, with my body in the shape it's in, no pill, no pills. <laughs>
people to want to be. Right. And we are taught from birth by our parents to be careful when we're making our decision. We are warned uh, to, to, by well-meaning people that love us not to be hasty, stay in control of what you're doing and where you're going, because every decision that you make comes with a price tag. When you decide to marry somebody, whether good or bad, you pay a price. When you, when you, amen. Y'all need to not marry, or you just want to admit that it comes with a price tag. I've been married for 42 years. With a price tag. Now, now I married a girl. Now, just, just aside now. now. I married a girl who was just she was fine. When I married, I got her out of West Philadelphia. She was a she was a she was as pretty as a picture. She was a baby doll. Satin doll. Satin doll. Satin doll.
was counting my money out of my check bank. And he told me, he said, son, look. He said, I've been carrying you for 18 years. I'm not asking for any money from me. But every week you get paid. And this is not the one that's in your mother. And I said, the other day, but that's almost dead. He said, yeah, but you eat more than me. Get your clothes washed in and take three baths a day. He said, I don't understand why. I mean, go there. He said, he said, you got that room cluttered up. You got telephones in there. And burning around electric all the time during the night. But our faith 
helps us to see beyond our present set of circumstances. And matter of fact, our faith helps us to see beyond full-born conclusions. Because many of us, many of us have divorced ourselves from active faith. We have a religious faith. But we don't have an everyday faith. Long time, and I'm a pastor. I've been preaching at St. Philip for 35 years. I, I've been pastor there for 35 years, and 20 years ago, I, I came to the conclusion that if my faith is an active Monday, what well, everything I do Sunday is no good. I see some of y'all frowning. Let me say that again. And I hope I get on your nerves with that one. Because, because, because Monday, if what you did Sunday does not affect your Monday, Sunday is a waste of time. Standing up shouting and clapping your hand and all that kind of foolishness. And then you live like the devil Monday through Sunday. Live because you have God on your side. And the 
the good of them that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. Oh, for we know that all things work together. It didn't say all things are good. Because we all have some bad days. We all have some trials and some tribulations. We all have some up days. Come on, help me somebody. And we all have some down days. But the Bible says all things, once they come together, they work together for my good because I love the Lord. And you do agree that God don't lose. You, you, do, you do agree that. Some of y'all ain't say yes or no. If your neighbor ain't say nothing, say so.
has no barrier to restrain Jesus. He can break the bonds of death and speak life into your soul. And that's why I got saved. Because you do know we, we are going to die, don't you? My father died in 1975 and he's still dead. My mother died in 2005 and she's still dead. My grandfather died and I just saw his grave last week in Petersburg, Virginia in 1956 and he's still dead. You stay in the ground a lot longer than you stay here. And all of us are going to die. But I have a hope that is beyond the grave. It doesn't it does seem to me that many of y'all getting what I'm saying. And I'm sorry, maybe I'm not preaching this thing like I feel it, but, 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 but maybe you feel this here. I have a hope beyond the grave. Say yes, say glory to 